What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are finally going to be showing you guys how to seal up the rear racetrack taillight. And this is something that's absolutely necessary to do because these things burn out easily, water intrudes into it, and it can cost you a whole lot of money. So I'm going to show you guys step by step how to seal up this entire piece as well as the two side lights step by step. So make sure you guys watch the entire video because you may miss a critical part that you need to know about. Make sure you tap that subscribe button. If you're a returning viewer, definitely subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell because we got more great content on the way. Now let's get right into the video. You definitely wanna seal this up because the price of these things have gone up. And in order to properly seal it, you have to remove the entire taillight. You just can't smear some sealing around the edges. You have to remove it in order to properly and effectively seal it. So I'm gonna show you guys that. Now the cost of these things uh, pre-pandemic was around nine to $1,200 just for this piece alone. That's not including labor and insulation costs. Now these things have gone up to about anywhere from 12 to $1,600 depending on your location as well as labor cost for installation. Now the tools needed for this is very basic. You'll need a pry tool, plastic pry tool. You'll need some silicone, some advanced 100% waterproof silicone. Don't go cheap, get some good stuff. You'll need a 3 8 ratchet. You'll need a 10 millimeter deep socket. You have to make sure it's long, it's deep. A short one will not work with the bolts needed to take off and maybe a pair of needle nose pliers. These are not necessary, but it really helps. Now, as far as the silicone, make sure it's good for outdoor. This is good for indoor and outdoor. Make sure it's 100% waterproof and make sure it's definitely not the cheap stuff. And also make sure it's good on plastics because that's the main thing we're gonna be using it on. So those are all the tools needed for this job. And that's it. Let's get right into it. Now, first off, if you come over here on the side of the rear panel, there's a screw right up in here. You can use a 10 millimeter to unscrew it. And if water leaks out, you know that there's water inside of this. So you're on a bad path as to start. So just unscrew this little nut here and you'll see water dripping out if there's water and condensation inside of there. So that's one way of knowing if there is water inside of there and if you're off, off to a bad start. Now, the first thing you wanna do is remove these two pieces here. Now, I've already removed this one. Now, all you have to do is take a pry tool, stick it right at the top and it comes right out, just like that. So after that, if you come over right inside where we pop that little uh, when we pop that little cup off, if you look inside, there's a plastic rivet in here. You have to get that one out as well as one on the other side. So you have to take a pair of needle nose pliers, stick them in there, squeeze it together and push it down and that'll release it. Now you can uh, take the trim and just pull it down, but that's going to break it. You need to reuse this to clip this back up. So you have to get this off and there's one on the other side. You have to release those to release this part of the, of the back of the hatch. So I just took my needle nose pliers, pushed it down, and now we can pull this part down here. So now that we got this piece loose here and we can kind of pull down on it, you wanna go up in here and disconnect our light bulbs. There's one on this side, one on the other side. All you do is grab it, turn it to the left about a half a turn, and it pulls right up. You wanna do that for both sides. Now, if you can see back there, the yellow clip in the rear, one on this side, one on the other side, you'll take a pry tool, get in there and pry it right down. It'll pull right down. This here is the perfect tool to kind of reach back there, put it in the top and just snap it right down. It'll pop right down. Now, the camera can't fit up in here, so, it's, it's really difficult to kind of get it up in there and show you guys, but it's really not that hard. As long as you have this right tool to reach back there and kind of prop it down. This is a, a nice tool, it won't break it. 
but it'll effectively get the, get the little rivet down. All right, guys, so we have the panel removed. Now you can see and have a better idea of what it looks like. These were the yellow clips that, that we released. You know, there's a total of six of them and it really won't hurt to pull a couple of them down. But as you can see, you know, how they're structured. So you have to kind of kind of push in and pull it down. So there's the green tabs there. Those things break very easily. It has this little piece here. It kind of flares out to help, help lock it in place. And it might, it may not hurt to buy an extra set of these. They're very hard to find at a local store like Auto uh, AutoZone or Advance Auto Parts, so you have to order them on eBay, unfortunately. But as you can see, this is held on by just clips. There's clips all around, and you have to release the clips in order to release the panel. Here's the back hatch. Here's the, the bob we released, the two bobs. Now, in order to release the tail light, there's uh, about 10 nuts up in here you have to remove. One, two, three, four up in there, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I believe that's that's it. And what you'll need is a deep socket to reach up in there, 10 millimeter. You don't need, a, it don't need to be a special color, just a 10 millimeter and it has to have this long socket to reach up in there. It's not gonna work with a short socket. You need a, a deep socket. Don't forget to remove the four screws on the edges as well. So we removed all of the nuts. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 total. So if you go to yank on a light and it's not coming out, it's likely there's still some nuts fastened up there. You just gotta find them. One, two, one was up there, one up there, one up there, 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 one and two there, one was up there, and I believe that's all. But it's 14 in total, you just gotta find them. So if you go to around the back side and try to pull up on the tail light and it's not coming off, it's likely there's still some nuts up there, you just gotta locate them. All the nuts are released, now you wanna come over here. This is 
the left side of the trunk. If you're facing it, it'll be on your right. But this is the left side. You wanna disconnect this connector here. So that will kind of slide through when you pull up on the tail light. Now, this will go through here when you pull up on the tail light. This can slide through and it's not still connected. So you want to release that. And one final connector, you want to release this one as well. So there's one on each side. There was this one there and then this one there. That way you can pull up on the tail light and this will just slide through through the uh the housing there. So you just want to go ahead and release that just like that. And those are the two connectors. So in total, you'll have uh, four things to disconnect back here. One light bulb, two light bulb, one connector here, and one connector here. Once all of these are removed and all the nuts, you'll be able to go around the front side of a hatch and pull up on your tail light, and the whole thing will come off. And I'll show you that right now. All right, guys, so we got the entire assembly removed. As you can see here, this is what it looks like. If we flip it over. So, so now you can see the connectors we needed to remove. One which is here and the other which is right here. We need to remove those to pull the whole assembly off. Now, let me show you what it looks like after almost two years of being sealed. You can see there where we sealed it. It's still nice and sealed. Pretty, pretty darn good. That's why we had no water issues because it's still nice and sealed. Now it's important to get a, a good silicone to seal it up. You can see there where we sealed it up. We'll probably put a little more silicone on the sides there. Now, these are the areas that are high prone that you want to seal very well all along these edges here. If we didn't have that sealing on there where it was sealed, there would be cracks. Literally, you can be able to see huge gaps in there and that's where the water seeps through. So you have to seal all this up. We're going to wipe this down and seal it some more, just a little bit. You don't need a whole bunch. You can pack it on if you want, but if you have a real good silicone, you really don't need much. And then you want to come around along the edges as well. As you can see there, we sealed it up. And even on the bottom, you want to come around. You want to seal the bottom edges as well, just as we did. Otherwise, water will get into there and you will have burnouts and dim tail lights. Now this particular silicone is fast drying. So uh, just after a few minutes, 10 minutes or so, we can put our tail light right back on. We won't have to wait for this to dry. Nice and sealed and just put it all along the edges there. Again, when you take this off, you'll see the cracks there. You wanna put silicone all within the cracks, but I just sealed up the entire thing and it really didn't need resealed. It was so well sealed the first time, I really didn't need to seal it again, but just to be on the safe side, we put more silicone on there. All right, guys, so it's fully sealed all along every edge of the corner. You wanna do the whole entire thing all around the edges so we're going to go ahead and put this thing back on and the steps is just reversal 
Same way you took it off, that's the same way you'll put it back on. Make sure you install, reinstall your connectors and then put all your bolts and nuts back in. Make sure you have everything fastened down so that you don't have any issues. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to seal up your two side tail lights. These are prone to dim as well and they're prone to water intrusion. So you have to seal these up as well. There we go. Pull it out just like that. And there we go. The whole thing pops right out. do is here is disconnect this little connector now I already sealed up this edge here when I removed the big racetrack tail light but I never remove I never seal the top but look at this huge gap right there so we're gonna put silicone all along the edges so water don't get inside there this is what I was talking about how these things have gaps in them and water can easily get inside so you have to seal this up otherwise you're going to be forking out a lot of money to get new tail lights all because they dimmed they're not burnt out but they're dimmed So that's still pretty good. Reconnect our connector. And then just pop it back in place. Taking our two little tabs snapping them right back in and then basically you'll do the same thing for the other side all right guys so that is the full procedure of the step-by-step -step how to seal your racetrack tail light from water intrusion i hope you guys enjoyed it give the video a thumbs up make sure you subscribe to the channel Share the video if you like, and definitely turn on that notification bell because we got more great content on the way. I will see you guys in the next video.